And I think we should try to find ways that really can unite us beyond ideologies, beyond nationalities, beyond religious background or cultural background. And I think a return to the land in cities and in the countryside can be an amazing tool to promote social cohesion, food security, but also economic prosperity. So the, the, the first, first thing that came to my mind is that you say we need more farmers, I guess, right? Absolutely. All right, Young and Eve, new episode. We're in Greece. First thing in English. We uh, we only had guests so far who actually spoke German, but we we don't need to talk that much German. So, uh, who's my who's my guest today? So my name is Pavlos. Uh, welcome. Uh, I'm 33 years old. Just moved to Athens about a month ago. I'm about to launch a project, a na nationwide project. It's called the Arc of Taste of Slow Food. Slow food. Slow food, yes. I've actually uh, lived in, in Germany, in Stuttgart, for more than five years. I, I studied in the University of Hohenheim. And uh, two and a half years ago, I had to interrupt the writing of my PhD and come back in my home country in Greece and try to fight my way out of the crisis. Um, as an agricultural scientist, um, it is very well known to me that agriculture is the mother of development really? and in a country that, like Greece where it's uh, full of uh, amazing tasty pure products and uh, very rich agricultural knowledge and a very diverse landscape uh, it was obvious to me that uh, agriculture is if not the only one on one of the very few real original assets that we have in order to find ways out of the unemployment and out of the financial crisis. So I went back in my hometown and I started giving value to an ancient olive grove that my um, family uh, has been cultivating since four generations. And uh, we did the full branding. Uh, we switched into organic biodynamic agriculture. From, from what? From conventional grandfather style uh, um, cultivation. So there are really huge trees, like more than six, seven hundred year old. It's an ancient variety. And uh, with this and that, it happened to be one of the very first family farming startups of Greece. Well, now it's not really a startup, it's a company that's maturing and it's walking its way to the quality food market, trying to be an ambassador of Greek quality. Then on the same time, I have uh, produced a video blog, a short documentary called Farming on Crisis. And the hypothesis was that what future can we hope for with so few young people dealing with food and farming? Like only 6% of the European farmers are below the age of uh, 35 years old. Really? So this is not a matter of uh, Greece or a matter of a crisis in Greece. I think this is a European crisis because you tell me who is going to produce our food in 10 years if the average uh, European farmer is above 55 years old. Maybe, so Maybe Africa? Maybe uh, agriculture from Africa is way cheaper? Sure, but we need to also try to find ways that agriculture also does not only feed us, but also feeds all, all the people and all life in the world. Why? Because um, it's food security that is the best guarantee for peace in the world. And uh, we cannot really extract resources and manpower from places like Africa in order to feed our lust uh, and big appetite in European and American and Japanese and Chinese cities. So really the solution is going back to local food systems, shortening the food chains and um, produce more of our own food. I really believe in the idea and the concept of community urban gardens, not only because the it's not about like um, it's not about producing tomatoes and cucumbers and eggplants. It's really about educating people to understand how it is to grow soil, which is one of the most uh, important resources that we have. But unfortunately, we are wasting it. We are wasting healthy soils in such an alarming rate. So you can imagine that like my action is not only to try to produce a best practice example for quality, sustainable agriculture in Greece, but also to project a message to other youth in Greece and in Europe that there is a way out of the financial crisis. Going back to the land is one of these ways. It's not easy, but it's one of the most tangible and real uh, ways out that we have. So, uh, I mean, that, that's, that's, a, that's a big statement. I mean, how can the financial crisis or the uh, crisis in Greece be solved by agriculture? 
Well, agriculture and family farming is uh, this year appreciated and recognized by the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations as the sector that will, that will feed the world. Family farming is going to feed the world. Uh, I think that uh, Greece has the potential to develop a very dynamic and strong uh, sector of the experienced food um, experience market. Food? Experience food is the type of food that has a story, has a myth, has uh, active, educated, socially networked producers that are producing this food. Producers that are reaching out directly to connect with uh, conscious and responsible consumers. And, you know, this is a growing movement all over the world. You, you know the slow food movement is going nuts all over the world. I remember very well how massive was the demonstration on Berlin on the 18th of January, the Via Habenes Zat, where thousands and thousands of people were, were, were asking for a more good, clean and fair food system. A food system that is good for our health, it is good for the planet, and it's good for the economy after all, because in my opinion it is the industrial food system is, I think, one of the mothers of the crisis. Because um, it cannot be that we are paying one and a half or two euros per liter of milk and then the actual producers get like 15 or 20 cents. There is a big disparity between these two um, ends. Are, are, there, are there many middlemen who... Exactly. It's a system that is actually not only depending on middlemen, but it's also depending on the ignorance of... Uh, consumers? Of the consumers, exactly. Like... Uh, take your can of Coke and try to read all the ingredients behind it. And like there are ingredients and chemicals we cannot even speak out of them, not even let alone to understand them. Well, all this is putting a pressure on our bodies, it's putting pressure on our communities, on our economies and in the planet. And I don't think that we can go on forever like consuming so much. We need to shift towards a new model of productivity. We need to redefine productivity. We need to put, to put ecology and environmental thinking and systems thinking into our concept of what is productive. And this is not only in Greece, it's all over Europe. It's just that Greece probably has destroyed its economy first once more. So that's probably we are creating this type of new connections and new solutions. And I'm sure that um, Europe will be able to capitalize on this social fermentation that takes place in Greece right now. That's why I believe any discussion about Greece leaving Europe is totally naive. And um, another point at the social aspects of going back to the land, I think that it is one of the few things that can really unite Europe. We are in a, in a historical time where Europe has to face again the clouds of fascism, of neo-Nazism, all these dark parts of our recent history and I think we should try to find ways that really can unite us beyond ideologies, beyond nationalities, beyond religious background or cultural background and I think a return to the land in cities and in the countryside can be an amazing tool to promote social cohesion, food security but also economic prosperity. So the, the, the first, first thing that came to my mind is that you say we need more farmers I guess, right? Absolutely. People tend to go to the city. They want to live in the city where life is. Isn't the first problem to, before actually making someone a farmer, to actually make them uh, or get them out in the country and be like, hey, you can live there, you can work there. Well, how do you, how do you uh, get the young people out of the city? Well, that, as a matter of fact, in the last uh, three, four years of the financial crisis, there is a very big wave of young people going back to the countryside here in Greece. Greece is experiencing um, a, a change in mentality where people see the farmer as someone that uh, has intellect, that has skills. The young Greek farmer is not someone that produces raw material for the industry so much. It, you know, there are many, many young people are creating very dynamic and extrovert small family brands that are finding their ways towards um, the quality market. One of those brands is mine. Um, so young farmers are enjoying a special educational and, and, and cultural status. It's not the typical old grandfather on an old tractor <laughs> and so on. There are 
there are young people that are educated with university degrees. Many of them studied abroad, like myself. Uh, young people that are speaking foreign languages, they have communication skills, they have marketing skills, they are very well socially networked. And I think this is, this exactly is, uh, in my opinion, a very hopeful element. You know, two, three years ago, we could not even think about this type of shift, but maybe one good thing of uh, the financial crisis is that as the economy went down, then other elements came up, like solidarity, like camaraderie, like uh, entrepreneurial and innovative spirit. And, um, well, this is a process that will take in countryside. It's a beautiful countryside here in Greece. I believe that in 20 years, Greece can be one of the European countries with the biggest proportion of organic agriculture. It can really become the organic garden of Europe. The climate is amazing. The landscape is very beautiful. There is still agricultural knowledge alive in the Greek countryside. Greek farmers, young Greeks, have a sentimental and emotional connection with their land of their ancestors. There are like small family holdings that they are um, beacons of local culture and hopefully also local sustainability and rural development. But we should not also forget the potential that exists inside the cities with roof gardens, urban gardens. Um, the New Yorkers do it. Even. In San Francisco they do it, in Shanghai they do it, in Berlin they do it, in Paris they do it, they do it all over the world. And people nowadays are producing good quality organic food in places that no one could have imagined four or five years ago. And I think this is the time for an urban agriculture movement also in Greece. And I think the slow food movement has to play a, a very strong role, very important role into that. You know, in the last few years, we, a lot of things, there are a lot of things that we discovered that exist, things that we have been ignoring uh, for many decades. One of those is the issue of uh, immigration. There are so many immigrants coming from uh, Africa and Asia. And in my opinion, instead of having them gathered in ghettos in the city center of Athens, why not help them create community urban gardens and exercise the, the agricultural knowledge they bring with them from their villages and towns in Asia and Africa? And uh, why not have local people, local Greeks, interacting with these uh, immigrants inside those urban gardens and try to exchange the skills? I think if we don't have this type of integration strategies, integration, methodol integration projects, then we're going to see more and more conflict for no reason. I cannot imagine that we are in the 21st century and we are still discriminating between color, between nationalities. Even within Europe, there are so many stereotypes that really has, we lost time. We are losing time. I think the crisis is giving an amazing opportunity to correct some of the mishaps of our society. And there are a lot. And the ball, the game is at the young people. The young people is the ones that uh, are the ones that uh, have this drive for change. And uh, it's not by luck that, like in Germany, also in Greece, there are more and more young people that are socially organized and they are occupying empty spaces and dedicating them into the cultivation, cooking and appreciation of good food. This is why I think it is food that has to gain a central role once again. It is the knowledge about what we put in our plates, how we source it from, how do we produce it, that is going to uh, correct some of the social problems, social uh, conditions that are the mother of the crisis. You, you, you mentioned um, that, like the new organic farmers who have PhDs and all that. Do you need to have a PhD? Do you need to be uh, did you have to be at the university to become a farmer these days or can you do it without a degree and all that? Well, it's not a prerequisite, but it helps. At least, in my opinion, there should be a few educated, maybe not to the PhD level, but at least educated young people dealing with agriculture in each village. It is this type of pioneer minds that will create the success stories in its village and in its town. And by crea creating a success story, also an economic success, they will draw the whole sector, the whole community, the whole local community with them. I think it's a great opportunity. There are a lot of young Greeks go uh, going into agricultural studies in the last four or five years. And there is 
land waiting for them when they finish their studies. That's why... For free? Well, it's the land of their ancestors, of their parents and their grandparents. Of course, it is a big challenge all over Greece, all over Europe, to create a new farm. Um, let's don't forget that in the last years there is no investment power in Greece. The banks are drained. Many rich Greeks got all of their money outside Greece in foreign banks. Thank God. Well, <laughs> but if you are working on the ground and you're trying to create something that has uh, needs an investment, then it's a hell of a lot of more effort. You know, if there is no investment power to implement some really nice projects in the countryside, then uh, it becomes really difficult. But then there are other types of currencies that emerge, currencies like creativity, like uh, collaboration, even Facebook likes become a currency in a time of crisis. And um, we have, if we have to think about sustainability, we need to cut at least one zero, zero of the budget. Um, we need to, I think that the, the, the solution and the key lies to the power of community. And um, right now, if we take the example of food, we have two types of systems. One is the type of people that want to pro pre preserve traditional seeds, to protect biodiversity, to appreciate local food culture, to create food communities. On the other side, there are people that just think about profit, but profit in a way that really drains the natural resources of the planet. It creates injustice in the society. Well, those two are not necessar necessarily incompatible. They can work together, but we need to find the golden solution in terms of them um, working together. And um, I'm very hopeful because uh, the objects, the people around the countryside are emerging all the time. And it's not only in Greece, it's all over Europe as well. I know very well uh, five, six years ago in my university uh, in Stuttgart, in the University of Hohenheim, we have created one of the first community student gardens and we have uh, had a huge action to try to improve our Mensa. Well, people are gathering around the idea of food. By improving our food, we are improving our communities, we are improving our society, we are improving our world, because there is so much reaction all over the world. People are pointing with a finger to the problem. Well, if our communities, if our neighborhoods, if our planet is sick, then it is us that have to become the immune system. Right. It's to the people, right. it's to the knowledge of the people. There's so much innovation, so much scientific knowledge that we can really, com we can really use to, to improve the environment, to improve our societies, to improve the economy. So let's, let's just do it. You were, you were mentioning profits. Can you, can you explain why is, it, why is it cheaper to get a burger at McDonald's than to uh, go to a local farmer and buy some potatoes, uh, some t tomatoes? Like, why, is, uh, why, why are vegetables more expensive than a freaking burger? Like, why, why is slow food more expensive than fast food? It's not more expensive, it's way cheaper. Is it? Here in Athens, it's a five million city. I don't come from Athens, I come from the countryside where I produce 60% of my food. But here in Athens, with 15 euro every week, I buy all the vegetables for my, for my cooking for a week. Well, 15 euros is hardly enough for a delivery fast food, for fast food delivered for one meal. So I don't see why people think fast food is cheaper. So maybe, maybe, Apart maybe, from that, maybe fast food is too cheap. Maybe, maybe it should be more expensive. I think fast food is expensive. Really? Well, for the quality, I mean, it's petrol-based chemicals that are constituting these foods, and these are dead cheap to produce, but we are still paying 5 and 6 and 10 euro to have a meal. I think, compared to the nutritional value of this junk right. food, it's, it's, I don't know how many, 600% higher. But people still buy it. Why, 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 uh, do we need to make it more expensive so people don't buy it and go like, well, okay, I'm going to have some vegetables instead? Well, people buy it because at the end of the day, we are afraid of diversity. We are afraid to taste snails, to taste something new. We are afraid of if someone has a different color in his skin. We are afraid of the different. That's why this makes us feel insecure. And that's why we try to find refuge behind the security and the safety of the TV commercials. And if you want real healthy food, you don't buy something that's advertised on TV, excuse me. <laughs> real food 
has not ingredients. Real food is the ingredients in a diet. So talking about junk food, talking about fast food and conventional food, like, you know, agriculture based on chemicals and so on, is not really cheaper because if you put into account the damage that it makes to the soils, it, the ethical damage that it makes to animal treatment, the long supply chains with middlemen, the livelihoods of the, mar of the farmers, if you put all this into account, then it's not, it's not cheap. It creates a lot of social debt and a lot of environmental debt. It's just that it's so heavily subsidized by EU subsidies. So all these external costs are hidden. But then when you have to deal with real people producing real food that is nourishing and life-giving to your body, but also regenerates the natural resources in the land, then, yeah, there are people working. This has a cost. I think we should put the real value on food. We found a way to put a euro in front of our food but we forget how to value our food. And I think this is the, f the core uh, of the problem. We need true cost accounting in our food. We need to pay for the real price of the nutrients that we receive. And this just does not happen. There is most of the money we pay goes to advertisement and, and you know, commodities like, um, like uh, all this uh, promotion machinery that is behind uh, the, our consumption partners. But there is a price for that. Uh, one in two Europeans are obese or overweight. One in three children of 11 years old are overweight. Where are we heading if we don't change our ways? One last question. Let's say I want to start an urban garden. Mm -hmm. I'm back in Berlin. What, what, what three kind of um, vegetables or whatever, uh, what should I start with? Well, in Berlin, uh, I know very well you have uh, an amazing Kürbis uh, culture in autumn and winter. There are so many recipes. So pumpkins. I would, pumpkins. I would go for pumpkins in, uh, in, and pumpkins and coal, uh, cabbage in, uh, in uh, autumn. Um, things like lettuce and radishes and even tomatoes and corn would grow at this season. Just go local. Just uh, go meet uh, some local farmer outside Berlin or even inside Berlin, there are so many urban garden projects. Um, talk with people, get some seeds, ask them how to put these seeds in the ground. Get another five friends of yours and start producing your food and find joy by putting a seed on the ground and like looking at it growing. I mean, you're generating life. And um, we are in a position that every person of our generation has to start generating life. We start to produce. Because if we go on living the way we do, we need three planets. And as far as I know, we only have one Earth. Thank you very much. I thank you. Enjoy your stay in Greece. Thank you very much. <laughs>